Hello students. So <clears throat> my name is Mushroom Jaiji and I will be teaching today the topic change of states of matter. Okay. matter matter is something which is both mass and occupy space right and of course you know what is mass mass is the quantity of matter in any object or any body so Uh, and also, you know that there are three states of matter, right? Solid, liquid, and gas. Solids. What is solid? Solids are hard to touch. Like this phone is solid. Like this marker pen is a solid. Water is liquid. Liquids can just flow when you cannot keep it in your hands, right? If you hold it, you have to hold it like this, or else it will slip through the finger. <clears throat> and what is gas? Gas we cannot hold. Gas we can only hold in a container. We cannot even see gas. Air is all around us, and it's a mixture of gases, but we cannot see it. So there are few things and few terminology to understand these three states of matter. Okay, like the solid, the molecules. the molecules in a solid are really closely very closely packed the molecules are very closely packed so So solids have high intermolecular attraction. Like the molecules are very close to each other, so they attract themselves each other very strongly. And there is a very low, very negligible intermolecular space. Intermolecular means in between molecules. So attraction in between molecules is very high, and space in between molecules is very low. Now let us go to liquids. Liquids have lower intermolecular attraction compared to solids. Okay, so lower. The molecules are a little bit apart. They can move about a little bit freely. That's why the flowy nature of liquids like this. Okay, a little apart. So. Lower intermolecular attraction, higher and greater. Greater intermolecular space. Okay, this is for liquids. And gases, the gases, the mole in gases, the molecules are far apart, very far apart. They are always moving from one space to the other. gases okay now the main topic the changes of state of matter for example like change means when the matter is changing from solid to liquid or liquid to gas solid to liquid or liquid to gas or maybe gas to liquid or liquid to solid Okay. So 
So, suppose, for example, I'm taking the most basic example, the most abundant thing around us, water. So, water. If we freeze it, it becomes ice. Right. Isn't it? If you freeze water, it becomes ice. So, this is liquid. And this is solid. So, the process in which a liquid changes into a solid at a particular temperature, at a fixed temperature, is known as freezing. Water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. Now always remember that suppose we have taken a glass of water and it is at room temperature 30 degrees Celsius. Now we keep it in the freezer. So it is freezing, the temperature is lowing down, decreasing. So water at 30 degrees Celsius cools down. Because we have kept it in the freezer, the heat is being extracted from the water and it is cooling down. So now, gradually the temperature will fall down to 0 degrees Celsius. The temperature will fall down to 0 degrees Celsius. Now what will happen? Now it will start to freeze. The process of freezing will start. So, heat is being extracted the freezer is taking away all the heat from the water and it is cooling it down faster more and more so at a point there is a mixture of water and ice right it is cooling down, but the temperature is still fixed at 0 degrees Celsius, okay? Then, the entire mass of water in the glass changes into ice. It is still at 0 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the water and the ice mixture in the glass keeps fixed, stays fixed, at 0 degrees Celsius until and unless the entire mass of the water changes into ice. Okay? Then once the entire thing is changed into ice, it cools down farther down. It cools farther down to maybe minus 30 degrees Celsius or minus 40 degrees Celsius, whatever the temperature of the freezer is. Okay, so you see, this is freezing right over here, right? This process is called freezing. Okay. Now, what if this process is reversed? We can reverse this process, no? Ice at minus 30 degrees Celsius. We take it out from the freezer and keep it in the room. So, it will gradually absorb heat from the surrounding Right. And over here, during melting of ice, heat is being absorbed. You are absorbing heat from the surrounding. So, ice is melting into water. And then there will be a mixture of water and ice in the glass. But it is still, it will still remain.
remain at 0 degree Celsius because the freezing point of water is 0 degree Celsius and the melting point of ice is also 0 degree Celsius. Okay? They are both the same. So, it will keep absorbing heat until the entire mass of the water in the glass becomes water and then And then water comes at 30 degrees Celsius, the room temperature, whatever the room temperature is, and that is melting. So, over here, right over here, we have two processes. Freezing, water is cooling down into ice, and melting, ice becoming water. Okay? Now the same thing happens with water and water vapor. You know you are heating water at room temperature, you put it on a gas stove and it starts boiling and all the vapors come out, that's water vapor. So that is called boiling and it is associated with vaporization. The mixture of water and water vapor will still exist at 100 degrees Celsius until and unless the entire mass of water changes into water vapor, right? And if you keep on heating the water vapor, the temperature will rise. Okay, then again. So, when we are boiling the water, it is becoming water vapor. The process is known as vaporization. And condensation, when water vapor cools down to form water. So, from gaseous state to the liquid state. So, a quick review of what we have learned today. We have learned today that when a solid changes into liquid, the process is known as melting. When a liquid changes into solid, the process is known as freezing. When a liquid changes into gas, the process is known as vaporization. And when a gas changes into liquid, the process is known as condensation.